Hi there, this is John Kirstead from Arctic Spas Vancouver Island with another video. Um, today, oh and I got to introduce my co-host here, uh, Nanook. Uh, today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into ozone and in particular the peak ozone system that we have uh, installed on all of our Arctic Spas, pretty much that we sell here. Um, because we focus on salt, um, we use ozone um, to work synergistically with it. So in a traditional maintenance system, uh, when you're using chemicals to maintain your spa, it's not uncommon to, on a regular basis, having to shock your water. And this is, uh, the idea behind that is, is each day that your um, chemical is in the water, you get a day's worth of reacted chemicals. So two days, you have two days worth of reacted chemical. Three days, you have three days worth of reacted chemical. And as the reacted chemical builds up in the spa, um, what happens is that's when you start to smell that really strong bleachy smell or you get some gases there that sometimes irritate your eyes. Uh, lots of people complain that it'll bleach their outfits and their hair and this sort of thing. So um, in, in uh, effort to reduce the amount of chemicals in traditional maintenance systems, ozone generation systems were utilized for many, many years. In fact, when I first started in the spa industry, that was kind of the only other option you could have to assist with your water maintenance was uh, ozonation system. Uh, I've mentioned in other videos ionization systems. I've mentioned, uh, um, of course, the salt water purification systems, UV systems, but I really want to talk about ozone because it's been around for such a long time and there's some key things that make ozone work better. The first thing to realize is that what we're trying to help purify and make nicer is a liquid, right? Water is a liquid and ozone is a gas and so in order for uh, the ozone to actually do its job in the water, uh, it has to be dissolved into solution. Um, so part of the problem is, is we get these bubbles that the ozone generator will generate and these bubbles get injected into the spa and on traditional, like, or rather on the very first uh, uses of the ozone in spas, basically we'd just plumb another jet kind of low in the spa and the bubbles would come up. The thing is, is that those bubbles rise very fast. Um, you know, I think the, the measurement is 18 feet per second. So, you know, if a typical hot tub is three feet deep, that bubble goes from the bottom to the top in about one sixth of a second. So if it can come in contact with something between now and then, then uh, it will help purify. But what we found a lot of the times is the ozone would collect in the layer between the cover and the top of the water. You get this ozone build up and it'd eat the bottom of your cover out and it'll eat the top of your fittings and pillows and things like that. But it wouldn't really do as much as we wanted to in the water. Which brings us to a really important point. In order for ozone to be effective, in fact, in order for any sanitization system or oxidization system to be effective, you need to have some contact time with whichever contaminant we're trying to get out of the water. And so contact time can be achieved in a number of different ways. The first way is uh, we want to take the bubbles from whatever size they are and make them as small as we can right off right off the bat. And so one of the ways we do that is we use this Mazai injector. So a Mazai injector is a very specialized injector which actually creates a vacuum. And when a gas hits a vacuum, it's kind of like a car crashing into a brick wall. You know, it just smashes everything up. So these larger bubbles hit this vacuum, they hit this brick wall, and they break into lots and lots of tiny, 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 tiny little bubbles. And then those tiny little bubbles get injected into the water through a effect called venturi. So venturi just means there's a draw of water, and as the water comes past, the, the air gets drawn in with it. This is the same effect that we use on the jets to make the jets more powerful drawing a bit of air in there. In this case, we're drawing in the ozone into the water and it's uh, in very small particles. But those ozone uh, bubbles can still join back up and form larger bubbles and they still have to come in contact with something in the water to oxidize um, so that they will uh, purify your water more. Um, the first target is, of course, um, reacted chemicals. So if you have reacted bromine or reacted chlorine in the water, the idea of ozone is 
Ozone is a very active form of oxygen. If most of you remember some of your high school chemistry, you might have, or maybe on uh, uh, hospital dramas on TV, you hear about O2, right? Give them some O2, oxygen, right? O2 is the normal state of oxygen. Ozone is also oxygen, but it's O3. So there's an extra oxygen molecule there. And it actually makes that a very unstable uh, atom or pardon me, molecule. So it wants to get back to that very stable state of two instead of, instead of three. So it's trying to find something to oxidize with. And what makes it so much more powerful, like um, a lot of times we use a, a non-chlorine shock or refresh or some sort of um, non-chlorine shock to do the same thing that ozone can do, but we have to use a chemical to do that, and then you're introducing another chemical to the water, and our whole goal at Arctic is to have the least amount of chemicals to maintain safe water. The beautiful thing about ozone is it's about 2,000 times more reactive than chlorine or bromine, um, or your uh, shocks, like your potassium permonosulfate. It's much more reactive, and so it's gonna take priority in any reaction over those. So it can actually free up your chlorine to do its job better. Um, it's also just a par very powerful oxidizer in its own right. So things like foams, uh, skin, oils, uh, any type of contaminant that you could have in your water, including the bacteria, molds, algae, and all that stuff, it can oxidize all of those things. And so we want it to get back to that happy state of O2 because then the, your byproducts of its reaction is just oxygen. So you have oxygen and water. So it's really an ideal source. And of course, because there's oxygen in the air, we can just use a straight feed. So this is feeding straight oxygen through the, there's two ozone generators in here. It's important that we have two of them. We have a built-in redundancy, so if one of them should fail, there's a second one. And we're using what are called cold cathode corona discharge ceramic uh, uh, ozonation systems. Um, they can last a very long time. Typically, we tell people that they'll last at least five years, um, but many times they can last a lot longer than that. Um, but we have two in there just in case because it's one of those things, there isn't a real easy measurement where you can just measure with the strip to find out how much ozone you have in the water. Um, there are some ways to do it. We can measure the body of water's oxidation reduction potential, which is similar to what we use for uh, triggering spa boy uh, activation. But realistically, the most important aspect of the ozone is that we can get it into solution and then we want to increase contact time. So contact time, um, the easiest way for us to, to increase contact time is to create what, what we call a trap, right? So if you look over here, you can see we have this, uh, um, we call it a, a mixing tank. And so what happens is, is the water flow into this mixing tank, so this is water plus the ozone, uh, is mixed together and then it goes in through the top of this chamber. So it's coming down in this direction through there. And inside that chamber, there's all these little balls, they call uh, tri-pack bio balls. But basically they're there just to create, break up any bubbles that are collecting, to give a spot for small bubbles to cling to um, and facilitate reaction. But the key thing is, is that as the water's flowing down, the natural tendency for a bubble is to go up. So the water flow keeps pushing the bubbles down through all of these balls and all of this uh, 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 internal area uh, to break it up. And then they're getting forced back up by the normal uh, rising of all bubbles or air or gases in water. They want to rise up. I tell people if you think about when you open a can of bubbly or something like that, the bubbles start coming up and they're getting bigger as they go to the top. The same thing happens in here. But with the water flow continuing to push those down, it creates kind of like a, a martini shaker. You know this, the bubbles are going down and up and down and up and down and up. And this is what increases the contact time and allows the reaction to take place. So 95% or more of the reactions will take place in that mixing tank. That mixing tank is actually the reaction chamber. And that's where we're gonna have most of the reaction take place. So we have the circulation of the pump running water through this tank on a continuous basis during all filtration cycles, which is why when I tell people if for some reason your water is a little off and it's not right where you want, or you're getting a little bit of foam or maybe some uh, something floating on the top of the water, a little bit of oil or something like that, could be skin products, makeups, hair, uh, hair products, um, 
sunscreen this time of year is what I find in my hot tub quite a bit because we live right on the lake. Um, and so the kids come in from the lake and they jump in the hot tub and I get sunscreen on top. Well, when that happens, I increase the filter cycle of my spa to 24 hours a day. And the reason I do that is because as long as that pump is on low speed, it's going to be generating ozone and it's going to be running water through this tank on low speed. As soon as we go to high speed, it shuts off um, because it's too much flow rate. By increasing your filter cycle, when you have a problem with your water, you increase the amount of time that you're adding ozone to the water, which again uh, enables you to not have to use a chemical to deal with whatever's causing that problem in your water. Um, so it's a default. I tell people anytime you have a clarity issue, anytime your water just doesn't look right, just increase your filter cycle a little bit. You'll get more ozonation and that's gonna make your tub a lot cleaner. Um, it's really a great product. Um, we literally include it with every single salt system because they work so synergistically together. You know, the nice thing is when you go into a saltwater spa, you never smell that strong scent of, you know, cl reacted chlorine in the water. There's no scent at all. Um, it feels really nice on your skin. There's no off gassing and stuff that's coming into your eyes. And part of the reason for that is, is that first of all, it's salt and chlorine generation in solution. But the second part of that is, is as soon as that combined chlorine forms, the ozone system goes in and knocks that combined chlorine back to free chlorine. And so once again, it can go off and do its job, which allows us to keep our levels at the very lowest uh, necessary to maintain safe water. So uh, you'll see a lot of companies advertise ozone systems. I strongly encourage you to look under the hood and get them to explain. Does it have a mixing chamber? Is there any redundancy built in there? Like is there more than one generator uh, doing the job or is the generator producing enough ozone to start with? Um, these generators are producing 300 micrograms of uh, ozone per hour, which doesn't sound like a lot, but remember gas is pretty light. So that's uh, actually a significant amount. So you're getting, uh, you know, we, our goal is to have at least 500 micrograms uh, per hour of production and uh, run that into the water. And then making sure that we have bubbles that get small enough that they're actually gonna mix into solution so that they can sanitize the solution. If the bubbles just raise up and pop on the top, all they're gonna do is oxidize your cover and your, your uh, fittings and stuff on the top of your spa and they're not really gonna do what you want it to do. So look for that. Look for an actual reaction chamber or a mixing chamber. A lot of companies will just use a length of hose, which is, it's better than nothing, but it's certainly not as good as having this trap where the ozone is literally trapped in this chamber and can't escape. And by by the time it finally does manage to work its way out and through the wall fitting, and we actually have a separate wall fitting that comes there, and you, we can even diffuse that wall fitting if necessary to get those small bubbles introduced into the uh, water. By the time those are coming in, you're back to oxygen and air going back into the water. And that's the peak ozone system. Uh, that we offer on Arctic Spas. Um, we do offer on our other products, we retrofit uh, ozone system and we use exactly the same methodology. Use a Mazai injector to get it nice and small, using a static mixing tank or a mixing chamber to facilitate a reaction and then a wall fitting to reintroduce the uh, reacted uh, oxygen back into the water, um, uh, into the bather load area of the spa. I'm John Kirstead from Arctic Spas Vancouver Island. Thank you so much for listening.